Okay, so we've seen how to, uh, the concepts of the k-nearest neighbors technique. Now let's see how to do it in R. Um, so we load our library, Hodar. Then we also load the caret package because that's required for partitioning. So we read the data, vacation trip classification.csv. This data set I have posted on uh, course web, so you have it with you. And we see that the data file initially has three columns, three attributes. So now, first thing you know already that we need to standardize the predictors. And we need to standardize the first two attributes, income and family size, because those are the predictors. And uh, the outcome is result. That's a you know target variable. We won't touch that. So to do that, we can use the convenience function hodar.scale.many, vac, which is the name of our data frame, and the columns that we want to standardize, one, two. Okay, so once you do that, you get, you see that two additional columns have been added to the data frame. Income underscore Z and family size underscore Z. Those are the normalized values of income and family size. So the next thing to do is to create the partitions. And as I suggested, we'll use the create data partition uh, function from the caret package, which we loaded here, library caret. So then we say t.idx set.seed because if you want your your results to match my results, you can do the set.seed. Otherwise, it's not essential. And then t.idx is create data partition. So what we want to do is to create 50% of the rows, in the training partition, and then 25% each in the validation and test partitions. This is a small data set. Uh, so we we don't have too many rows to play with. So I say create data partition vac dollar result. Remember, when you're using the create data partition function, you have to indicate your target variables and uh, it'll get distributed evenly by the target variable. Okay, so we said vac dollar result. And then p is 0.5 because we want 50% of the rows in the training partition. p is 0.5. List is false because we don't want a list. We want a vector as a result. So, so you get t.idx. And therefore, your training partition is going to be vac t dot idx comma three colon five. Okay, that is, we want only the third, fourth, and fifth columns. Third column consists of the result. The fourth and fifth columns consist of the normalized values of the predictors. Okay. Now, of course, we could have kept all the columns and used only the columns we wanted, but I just want to show you that sometimes it's possible to to do this. Okay, so we, we are keeping only the columns we want in our partition. We could have kept all of them, doesn't matter. Okay, so we create our training partition. Now, what is left is 50% of the original uh, data, that is the, you know, vac of minus t dot idx 3 colon 5. Okay, so if originally we had, let's say 30, then 15 would have gone to train. The remaining 50 are now sit, 15 are now sitting in temp. Okay, now we have to partition this into validation and test partition and I said those are going to be equal. So I said the validation and test partitions are going to be 25% of the original size which means 50% of what is left over. Right, because train is 50. What is left we are again going to take 50-50 for validation and test. Okay, so that's why we are doing temp is minus uh, vac of minus t dot idx then val dot idx we are going to do a random uh, selection from the temp partition. So we say create data partition temp dollar result p equals 0 0.5 right because of from temp we want to put 50 percent in validation 50 percent in test. So that's why this is 0.5 list is false and then val is temp val dot idx and test is temp of minus val dot idx. So now we've got the three partitions. Okay so now the next job is to generate predictions with k equals 1. Okay, we'll try k equals 1, k equals 3, k equals 5 and then for each option we'll generate the error matrix and see which one gives us good results. Okay, so names train. So now we see that we retained only the target variable and the two normalized variables. So that's why you see result income underscore z, family size underscore z and then we say pred1 which is predictions for k equals 1 is knn and then 
this is the we are using the KNN function to generate the predictions K nearest neighbors function it'll do the calculations that I just explained to you right it'll find the K nearest neighbors for every value and then it will classify based on the majority class there okay here we are going to directly look at probabilities not probabilities at the classifications the next one will generate the probabilities we'll see that separately okay so k and n and then the first thing we need to do is the first argument we pass is the predictors in the training partition okay what are all the predictor variables in the training partition clearly that is the second and the third column the two the first column is the result which is the target variable second and third columns are our uh, predictor variables and then similarly the predictor variables in the validation partition predictor variables in the validation partition and then the target variable in the training partition obviously this has required so that the system can look at the nearest neighbors and then see which one is the maximum class okay and then finally what is the value of k that we are using okay so that's the function call and that is how uh, that's what each element stands for so whenever you use the knn function you have to indicate the predictors in the training partition predictors in the validation partition target in the training partition and the value of k using all this the function will generate a set of predictors and we are storing the generated predictors in a variable called pred1 we are not adding these variables to the data frame itself we are just storing it separately okay so once you have the predictor predictions which are stored in the variable pred1 and you've got the actual values in the variable result of the validation partition we can now create our uh, error matrix for the validation partition through the table function which we saw earlier so table val dollar result right those are the real values pred1 these are the predictions so tabulate the actual values against the predictions and you know add these as legends dnn actual predicted okay so you see here that of the five actual buyers okay the model predicts four people as buyers and predicts one of the buyers as a non buyer of the five non buyers it predicts three as buyers and two as non buyers okay so it's not doing a really good job on the non buyers in any case this is the error matrix for k equals 1 okay now we can repeat the result for k equals 3 and k equals 5 okay so here you see pred 3 is exactly the same except for except for k equals 3 here okay now you see the result is uh, all buyers are predicted correctly with three three neighbors and non buyers uh, you know 60% uh, of the of them are predicted correctly okay then we move on to 5 and we see that the performance actually deteriorates a little bit okay so it looks like k equals 3 is a good incidentally I did not choose even numbered values of k because it could turn out that you have a tie right that uh, the there are let's say you chose k equals 4 you found two neighbors who are buyers and two neighbors who are non buyers okay in this case it cannot take a majority vote so when you have two classes it's a good idea to take odd numbered values for k if you choose an even numbered value and if there's a tie then the algorithm just randomly chooses a class okay so we did uh, 3 and 5 and we generated the error matrix for 3 and 5 and we find that 3 is probably a good value so now we can select k equals 3 and then do the error matrix on the test cases okay so we generate the predictions on the test partition k and n train 2 comma 3 test instead of validation we are using the test here then train 1 and then the value of k is 3 and then we generate the table error matrix again we do instead of val dollar result we do test dollar result and then whatever we generated here pred dot test we give that those are the predictions on the test test partition and then the DNN okay and we find that in the test partition our performance uh, is slightly inferior because in the validation partition I think we had 10 cases right yeah in the validation partition we had 10 cases out of which the system got 8 correct in the test partition we have 9 cases and the system got 6 of them right 
Okay, so it's not too bad of a deterioration; it's slightly bad. And of course, this is these are small data sets, so uh, you'll expect a lot of uh, deviation. Okay, now let's calculate if the model is really helping us. Okay, now without the model, right? If we had no model available, then how would we predict the cases? Okay, so without the model, if you had no model at all, and you're given a new case and you're asked to predict then the only thing you can do is go by the proportions in the data okay so we can do uh, so the original data is called vac vacation data set so in the original vacation data set how many buyers and non buyers were there right so if you do a table you find that buyers and non buyers are 21 and 19 right and when you have in the in the absence of any model all you can go by is the majority class right so in that case you're better off simply predicting everyone to be a buyer okay you'll have a slightly better than 50 percent chance uh, performance rate okay so you can do that and therefore the a priori performance without the model performance is 21 by 40 or 0 0.53 okay so in the absence of a model we'll get 53 percent of the cases correct okay with the model from the val test partition we see that we can get 6 out of 9 correct okay so with the model our performance is 0.667 okay that's our performance so now the model has helped us to improve the performance from 0.53 to 0.66 the ratio of those two is what is the lift that the model is giving us 0.667 divided by 0.53 so the lift of the model is 1.3 okay so now we can look at the you know uh, the table proportions instead of the actual numbers this is something we already discussed we can do tab store the results and then do a prop dot table tab you get this prop dot table etc now we are getting two decimal places because we had earlier set uh, you know options digits equals 2 so we are getting only two otherwise you could get more okay so we are printing the proportions instead of the raw numbers okay sometimes as we said we may want to generate probabilities instead of the actual classifications so to do the probabilities all you have to do is make the same call but just say prob equals true okay so you're making the same call as before you're saying prob equals true okay and then if you look at this pred.p it has the actual classifications which we had earlier but it also has the probabilities for each of them so in other words it says one is a buyer and the probability of being a buyer is 0.67 two is a buyer the probability of being a buyer is one etc okay so for each one it gives you the class predicted class and it gives you the probability of belonging to that class okay that's what you get and if you want to see only the probability if you just print the result object you will get the predictions and the probabilities if you want to see only the probabilities you can use the attributes function attributes pred.p dollar prob and then you see only the probabilities okay you might be able to use these probabilities later on to generate the uh, you know the lift chart that we saw earlier okay so that completes our discussion of k nearest neighbors you have already noticed that i have posted a quiz on knn and this quiz is available on course web you can take a look i'll extend the due date for the quiz a little bit beyond sunday because we lost some time in the process okay so that you will have some time to do the quiz i'll extend the date uh, second important thing is uh, i know this lecture has been pretty long uh, i i suggest that you read the book and then you'll be able to cover most of what I'm doing doing here. In case you have any questions and so on, you can read the book. Everything is explained in great detail in the book.